Hi, I'm Tim, Automation Engineer from Tria Technologies, and today I'm going to show you how to integrate this IO-Link Master Device from Valip with the Parker Automation Controller, or PAC for short. We're going to do this over the EtherCAT network. Once we have the IO-Link Master configured, I'll show you how to configure the channels to support the different IO-Link slave devices. The IO-Link slave devices that I'll be showing you today are a smart light from Valif, a pressure sensor from Valif, power supply also from Valif, and a valve plug cable that I have back here controlling a bank of Parker pneumatic valves. This particular plug is capable of controlling up to 24 valves, but I have three here to show you today. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to want to do is open up Parker Automation Manager software, which I already have open. We'll go to File, New Project. We want to do a standard project, and we'll name this Valif to Pack. Okay, and then it'll ask us which device type we have. Here on my demo, I have a Pack 320C, so I'll select that. Okay. And then once that loads into the device tree, I can double click on my device, scan the network, and if I have a pack connected, it'll find the pack. So there we have it, and we'll hit OK to connect. And this little light here goes green to indicate that you are in fact connected. So if you haven't done so already, you'll need to load the device description file that you can download from the Valif website. To do this, you go to Tools, go to the Device Repository, install, and then navigate to the file that you downloaded. And as soon as that loads in, you're ready to use the Valif IO-Link Master Device. So we'll hit close. Now what we can do, under our EtherCAT Master, we can right click there, scan for devices, and this will find all the EtherCAT devices that are connected to the pack. So you'll see the scan here found the PAC 320 bus coupler, the PAC IO module that's connected to my PAC, and also this BNI underscore ECT underscore 508105Z015. And that's the Balaf IO Link master device that I'm using. So we're going to copy these all to the project. And you'll see it added them into our project here. So the Balaf device by default is going to load in with eight standard inputs. So since we have IO link devices, we're going to need to define how these operate. So we can right click on the first channel, select plug device, and this is where you have all the options to configure that channel. So you can configure this channel as a standard input, a standard output, or an IO link device. So we're going to do an IO link device. So in the first channel, I have plugged in the IO link smart light. The IO link smart light is an 8 byte output, 1 byte input. So we need to match that configuration with our selections here. So we have 2 byte input, 8 byte output, and that'll be the closest that we have. So we'll go ahead and plug device. First, we're going to rename that to smart light so we can keep track of that in our project. Hit OK. And you'll see it renamed that here. And then if we click on the Valif IO-Link master device and go to EtherCAT IO mapping, you'll see it added the outputs bytes here and then the input bytes down below. So let's go ahead and do that for all the devices we have connected. So the next device we have on channel two is the pressure sensor, and that's just a two byte input device. Okay. And then on channel three, again, right click, plug device, that's where we have our valve plug, and that's a four byte output. There we go, four byte process data output. We'll call that valve plug. And lastly, we have the power supply plugged into channel four. 
Let's go a plug device, and that's a four byte input device. So we'll scroll to that, find four byte process data input, plug device. Okay, and since I forgot to rename that, we'll go ahead and rename that now to power supply. Okay, so now when we go to our IO mapping, you'll see we have all of our outputs first. So we have our smart light outputs here, followed by our valve plug outputs. And then we have our inputs. We have our smart light inputs, our pressure sensor inputs, and the power supply inputs. Once you have all the channels properly configured, the devices are ready to use in your program. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a project that I created previously. And you can see in this project, really the only differences are that I went ahead and I renamed the bits so that they're easier to reference in my program. You can refer to the user guide for the specific IO link device that you are using to find out where the bits need to be mapped to. We'll go ahead and go online with this project and I'll switch over to a visualization that I created to control the program. So you'll see I've got the bank of valves. I've put some switches on here. I can control those, turn them on and turn them off. You can see the status of the power supply. The smart light I can put in the segment mode and I can turn on the different lights. We can do different colors. We got red. We can do red, green, and blue to give a white and a blue. We can also run this in level mode. And if I add pressure onto my pressure sensor, you'll see the pressure increase and the light increases with the pressure increase. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. For more information on this or other automation topics, please visit our website at www.triadtechnologies.com.